Bayram and Edetma, by Madison Julius K. Wine against each prince now she had held her own, an easy victor for the seven years o'er kings and sons of kings. Edetma, she who, when much sought in marriage, hating men, espoused their ways to win beyond their worth through martial exercise and hero deeds. She, who accomplished in all warlike arts, let cry. Through every kingdom of the kings, Edetma weds with none but him who proves himself her master in the push of arms, her suitor's foeman she. And he who fails, so overcome of woman, woman scorned, disarmed, dishonored, yet shall he depart, brow bearing, forehead stigmatized with fire, behold, a freedman of Edetma this. Let cry, and many. Princes put to shame, pretentious courtiers small in thew and thigh, proud palanquin from principalities of Iraq and of Hind and farther sinned. Though she was queenly as that empress of the proud Amalekites, Tedmora, and more beautiful, yet she had held her own. To Bayram of the territories, one son of a Persian monarch swaying kings, came. Bruit of her and her noised victories, her maiden beauty and her warrior strength. Eastward he journeyed from his father's court, with men and steeds in store of wealth and arms, to the rich city where her father reigned, its seven citadels by seven seas, and messengered the monarch with a gift of savage vessels rotten out of gold, of foreign fabrics stiff with gems and gold. Vizier ambassador the old king gave his answer to the suitor. I, my son, what grace have I above the grace of God? What power is mine but a material? What rule have I unto the substance less? Me, than the shadow of the prophet's shade less, God invests with power but of man, man, and the right beyond man's right. Is God's, his the dominion of the secret soul, and his her soul. Now hath my daughter sworn, by all her vestal soul, that none shall know her but her better in the listed field, determining spear and sword. Grant fate thy trust, she hangs her hand upon tomorrow's joust, a prize to win. My greeting and farewell, informed Edetma and the lists. Arose, armored and keen with a Chorasmian mace, Davidian hauberk came she. Her the prince, harnessed in scaly gold Arabian, met. So clanged the prologue of the battle. As closer it waxed, Prince Bayram, who a while withheld his valor, in that she he loved opposed him and beset him, woman whom he had not scathed for the Chosre's wealth, beheld his madness, how he were undone with shining shame unless he strove with all, world fiery sword and smote. The bassinet rushed from the haughty face that long had scorned the wide world's vanquished royalty, and so rushed on his own defeat. For like unto a moon gray clouds have caverned all the eve, the thunder splits in, virgin triumph. There she sails a silver aspect, vanquished so was Bayram by his blow. A wavering strength swerved in its purpose, with no final stroke stunned stood he and surrendered. Stared and stared, all his strong life absorbed into her face, all the wild warrior, arrowed by her eyes, tamed, and obedient to lip and look. Then she on him, as condor on a kite, plunged pitiless and beautiful and fierce, one trophy more to added victories, hailed off his arms, amazement dazing him, seized steed and garb, confusion filling him, and scoffed him forth brow branded with his shame. Dazzled, six days he sat, a staring trance, but on the seventh, casting stupor off, rose, and the straightness of the case that held him as with manacles of knitted fire, considered, and decided on a way. Once when Edetma with a hoory band of high-born damsels, under eunuch guard, in the walled palace pleasance took her ease, under a myrrh bush by a fountainside, where Afrit's nostrils snorted diamond rain in scooped cornelian, one, a dim, whorehead, a patriarch mid-gardener underlings, bent spreading gems and priceless ornaments of jeweled amulets of hollow gold sweet with imprisoned ambergris and musk, symbolic stones in sorcerous carcanets, gem talismans in cabalistic gold. Whereon the princess marveled and bade ask, what did the elder with his riches there? Who, questioned, mumbled in his bushy beard, to buy a wife with all, whereat they laughed as oafs when wisdom stumbles. Quoth a maid, with orient midnight in her starry eyes, and tropic music on her languid tongue, and what if I should wed with thee, O beard grayer than my great-grandfather's, what then? One kiss, no more, and, child, thou wert divorced, he, 
and the humor took them till the birds, that listened in the spice tree and the plain, sang gaily of the gray beard in his kiss. Then quoth the princess, Thou wilt wed with him in Sada? Mirth in her two eyes gazelles, and gravity bird nestled in her speech, and took in Sada's hand and laid it in the old man's staggering hand, and he unbent thin, wrinkled brows and on his staff arose, weighed with the weight of many heavy years, and kissed her leaning on his shaking staff, and heaped her bosom with an emir's wealth, and left them laughing at his foolish beard. Now on the next day, as she took her ease with her glad troop of girlhood, maidens who so many royal tulips seemed, behold, bowed with white years, upon a flowery sward the ancient with new jewelry and gems, wherefrom the sun coaxed wizard fires and lit glimmers in glowing green and pendant pearl, ultramarine and beaded, vivid rose. And so they stood to wonder, and one asked as yesternoon wherefore the father there displayed his shake locks and the genie gems. Another marriage and another kiss? What, doth the tomb ripe court his youth again? O aged, libertine and wish not deed! O prodigal of wives as well as wealth! Here stands thy damsel, trilled the peri tall Diara with the raven in her hair, two lemon flowers blowing in her cheeks, and took the dotard's jewels with the kiss in merry mockery. Ere the morrow's dawn, bethought Edetma, shall my handmaidens, teasing a grey beard's whim to wrinkled smiles, for withered kisses still divide his wealth? While I stand idle, lose the caravan whose least is notable. My right and mine, betide me what betides. And with the morn before the man, for privily she came, stood habited as of her tire maids in humble raiment. Now the ancient saw and knew her for the princess that she was, and kindling gladness of the knowledge made two sparkling forges of his deep dark eyes beneath the ashes of his priestly brows. Not timidly she came, but coy approach became the maiden of Edetma's suite, and humbly answered he, All my old heart. Responsive to her quavering request, the daughter of the king did give thee leave? And thou wouldst well? Then wed with me forthright, thy hand, thy lips. So he arose and gave her of barbaric jewelry and gems, and seized her hand and from her lips the kiss, when from his age, behold, the dotage fell, and from the man all palsied hoariness, victorious eyed and amorous with youth, a god in ardent capabilities resistless held her, and she, swooning, saw gloating the branded brow of Prince Bayram.